All right, guys. <clears throat> it is a dreary, drizzly day here in the end times in the shithole former paradise of Garfield, Texas. We are now somehow it's Saturday morning, December 28th, 2019. So uh, I'm procrastinating because I need to get out there and start pre-drilling uh, 98 holes uh, with my new $15 uh, drill from the pawn shop. Uh, so before I gear up for that, and I'm waiting on news to see if the hobo, if the hobo party is going to be canceled because of inclement weather. So while I'm sitting around procrastinating, uh, I just decided to go here on Yahoo News. So my challenge was to go on Yahoo News and see how long it took to find a story about how fucked we are to find today's We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. Uh, here on the last Saturday of 2019, it took me about eight seconds. <clears throat> this was the eighth biggest story on the planet, according to Yahoo News. And once again, this is uh, from Business Insider. I, I, can, I, I find more environmental news on Business Insider is getting close to Manga Bay with uh, their, their environmental news. I don't know what deal Business Insider has cut with Yahoo News. There's obviously some sort of kickback, but Yahoo News consistently takes their environmental reporting from Business Insider. And Business Insider does a pretty good job. So anyway, this is Yahoo News and Business Insider teaming up on the last Saturday in 2019 for today's <clears throat> We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. A giant blob of hot water more than twice the size of California threatens the survival of fish and coral near New Zealand. There you go. How about that uh, for a, <clears throat> a we are so fucked headline to close out 2019. Take it away, Business Insider. A swath of the Pacific Ocean, more than twice the size of California, <coughs> is heating up and fast. About 500 miles east of New Zealand, South Island, near the Chatham Islands, ocean temperatures have spiked to almost 10 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 6 degrees Celsius, warmer than average. Normally, surface temperatures in that part of the Pacific hover around 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius, <coughs> but they are now <coughs> 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, according to James Renwick, a scientist at Victoria University in New Zealand. Quote, it is the biggest patch of above average warming on the planet right now. <coughs> yes, God. Uh, in, in satellite images, the 386,000 square mile, roughly the 1 million square kilometer patch looks like a menacing red blob, although I see plenty of other menacing red blobs 
in the Pacific Ocean right now as well, including right here off the coast of our own shithole country. <coughs> Quoting <coughs> this fellow Renwick, Sea temperatures don't actually vary too much, and one degree plus or minus is quite a big deal. And then this I don't understand. And this area is probably four degrees Celsius or more than that above average. And that's pretty huge. He added, I don't have an explanation for it. There you go. Thank you, scientist. Since 1981, water temperatures off the New Zealand coast have increased between 0 0.18 and 0 0.36 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 degrees Celsius, on average per decade. So it should be taking 10 years for these waters to heat up 0.1 to 0.2 degree. And we're looking at 10 degrees in the last couple of months. But when sea surface temperatures spike precipitously, it is considered a marine heat wave. These typically occur when weather causes the ocean to absorb more heat than usual or if conditions prevent the ocean from releasing heat. In the case of New Zealand's current hot spot, Renwick said that the culprit could be an anti-cyclone that has settled above the region. You know, if the cyclones don't get you, the anti-cyclones will. And uh, guys, I'm just, this gets kind of technical uh, for a while through this article. Uh, <clears throat> New Zealand experienced a comparable marine heat wave two summers ago when the water spiked up to 6 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it has rocketed past that. Uh, climate change can make these marine heat waves worse because the ocean absorbs 93% of the extra heat greenhouse gases trap on Earth, so as global warming gets worse, heat waves on land and in the ocean grow more intense. This is Hilary Scannell, an oceanographer at the University of Washington, probably talking more about our own blob. Quote, in a warming world, these events are going to become worse and we are going to head toward a state where it is like a permanent marine heat wave. There you go. Uh, in 2014, a marine heat wave plagued the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii, Alaska, and California, it led to it led seal and seabird populations to die off, algae blooms to spread, and coral reefs to bleach. Scientists nicknamed that the blob. And now, uh, a similar heat wave. Uh, bloomed in the same waters. Uh, that blob, meaning the one from uh, earlier this year, bleached coral in the Hawaiian Islands and stranded sea lions and whales on the California coast. Ocean temperatures were nearly 6 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius warmer than average, uh, you, you know, off our own coast earlier this year. So that one in New Zealand is way beyond 
the blob here. Uh, those blobs, much like New Zealand's current hotspot, spell disaster for marine life. Warmer temperatures prompt coral to expel its algal food sources and turn ghostly white. This bleaching, in turn, increases coral's risk of death and threatens the fish species a reef supports. <clears throat> Other underwater ecosystems are also put at risk as the waters warm. Higher sea temperatures make it difficult for bigger, more nutritious species of cold water zooplankton uh, to thrive. You know, zooplankton, which in turn feed the fish and the other predators. You know, we're talking the base of the food chain. When that happens, fish and sharks abandon their traditional habitats in search of cooler uh, waters. Good luck for that. Uh, a study earlier this year showed that hotter temperatures from a Pacific heat wave caused the local extinction of a species of kelp in New Zealand waters, which then allowed an invasive species of seaweed to take over. <clears throat> Spiking ocean temperatures also prompt an increase in algae blooms that poison seafood. <coughs> in 2015, <coughs> during the first blob, an enormous bloom spanned the U.S. West Coast, contaminating local shellfish. The governments of Oregon, California, and Washington were forced to shut down the commercial harvest of Dungeness crab to protect people from contaminated seafood. And this goes on and on, guys. And then there's a related story. I guess Oregon has now shut down uh, the Chinook salmon fishing season. I think a lot didn't Alaska didn't they just shut down a a salmon fishing season now we have the state of Oregon shutting down the salmon uh fishing season uh oh, Jesus 2019 <coughs> <coughs> we thought we we're so fucked in 2019. Guys, we ain't seen nothing yet. Put on your seatbelts the rocket ride known as the 2020s is nigh. Get out there and enjoy Girl Scout cookie time while you still can because 2020 is knocking on the door and we are so fucked. And with that, little dog, I need to get my pawn shop drill and start pre-drilling holes to build my fence to fence out Mad Max. I hear my hired Mexican is showing up on Monday to build a wall between me and the Mexicans next door. There you go. Bye, guys.